CBS Radio, a division of the Columbia Broadcasting System and its 217 affiliated stations, present the CBS Radio Workshop, radio's distinguished series dedicated to man's imagination, the theater of the mind. Transcribed. Cops and Robbers is a game played by children, and it's a game actors play on the radio for a living. Tonight, the actors, as usual, will be playing make-believe robbers, but the cops will be real. The CBS Radio Workshop presents Cops and Robbers. My name is Stanley Ness. I'm a writer, mostly of crime, criminals, and what police do about them. For a long time, I've wondered what real detectives would do when confronted with a fictitious crime. And tonight, the CBS Radio Workshop is giving me a chance to find out. First, so you, the actors, and I can start off knowing what the detectives will try to find out, I've written a short dramatic sketch which we've recorded while our detectives, all retired members of the police department, city of New York, are across the street having coffee. The scene, a one-room flat on the Upper East Side of New York. <laughs> Who is it? It's me, Dunk. Well, come on in. It's open. It's not open. Oh. Honest. Goodness. Hi, baby. Oh, be careful. My fingernails are wet. Oh. Well, where is it? Well, uh, where's what? The chow mein. You were going to stop at the Chinese restaurant and bring back chow mein. Where you been? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I was. I, I forgot. You forgot. How could you forget what you went out for? Ellie, baby, listen. You, you got to stand by me. I'm in a jam. You went out to get chow mein. How could you get in a jam? I did. That's, that's all there is to it. What kind of a jam? I can't tell you right now. You expect me to stand by you and you can't tell me? Why don't you get the chow mein? Forget about the chow mein, will you? Listen, you got the telephone number that bar and grill where Joe hangs out, that Glenham's? What's Joe got to do with this? Have you got the telephone number? Yeah, I got it. It's in the drawer there. One of their cards. Oh, get it for me, will you, baby? Get it yourself. My fingernails are all wet. What's this all about, anyway? I'll tell you. I'll tell you later. Well, where is it, anyway? It's there. Look. It said, look, not tear apart. Oh, here it is. Look, I got to go out in the hall and phone him. Dunk? Yeah? Oh, will you sit down and relax and tell me what this is all about? I don't have to sit down. I can tell you standing up. I shot a guy. You what? I shot a guy. You went out to get a container of chow mein. How could you shoot a guy? I don't know how I could, but I did. So we know what our detectives will try to find out. The crime referred to was of such a serious nature that the precinct detective squad commander was called from his home to supervise the investigation. Our squad commander tonight is Lieutenant Dan Campion, who retired from the police department a little over a year ago after 25 years in the job. The detectives working under him will be Howard C. Clancy, Jerry Heaney, and Richard Jacobson. Approximately an hour and 10 minutes after the crime occurs, Detective Jacobson, who is carrying the squeal, which means it is his case, has returned to the station house and is typing up a report on the progress of the investigation so far. Remember, the detectives have no script. They are playing themselves, doing a job just like they've done every day. What's up, Jake? Oh, hello, Lieutenant. We had a tough stick up in the precinct tonight. Oh, another one? Yeah, a liquor store over on 72nd Street. What time did it happen, Jake? Oh, about 9.50. It's that Fairland liquor store over on oh, 280, yeah. 72nd. Yeah. And uh, a fellow stuck a gun into the clerk who was in front of the store, and the owner was in back doing a little bookkeeping. When uh, he stepped out, he had a pistol. So you got a permit for it? Oh, yes, he had that. We checked on that. But anyway, he, poor fellow, got shot. Is he seriously hurt? Oh, yes, sir. He's alive yet, though. Oh, yes. Oh. He's over at Metropolitan Hospital. He fired a shot at the stick-up man. Stick-up man fired two at him and hit him. And he went down. He Where was he four. shot, uh, Dick? Under the chin, it hit him. Deflected into his jaw, just below his lips. Oh. Anything else to it? He got a little more than $800. He grabbed a uh, money in a paper bag, 
and uh, ran out the front door in the street. Anybody see him? Any good identification? Well, had a pretty fair identification. The uh, fellow had a car. We found it out later. He uh, ran around the corner on 3rd Avenue. He hit some old woman, knocked it down. Anybody see him? There was a sanitation man tried to help the old woman up. But he saw this fellow continue to run. He went around 3rd Avenue and looked him over, and he was getting into a car and got away. You got the on... sanitation man's oh, name definitely. and all yes, like that? Yes, we have Good. that. Good. But on the back of his car, he had some of that red tape, that fluorescent tape they're using. Oh, yes. yes. And uh, that was all over the back bumper. And he got the last three numbers of the plate. Okay. I sent out alarm for the car over the teletype with those three numbers, and uh, all the boys in the neighboring precincts have been notified. Now, Lieutenant Campion, Sergeant Klein on TS just rang upstairs, and he says Dowd over on post 11 thinks he's got that car spotted that's been holding oh, that fine. stick up that's and fine. shooting. It's over there at 2nd Avenue, 77th Street. It's a two door Plymouth sedan. It's 3T152. Oh, we got the full license. Yeah, it? and I verified it, and it's registered under a Joseph E. McCondy. It's 761 East 76th Street. Hey, what? Clancy, will you check Ross property on that? Okay. Yeah, see if you can get the description of the car and get the owner's name and address. Yeah, Dowd's is guarding the car over there. He's not letting anybody go near it. Say, sure. Jake. You go over with Howie after he makes that call and see if we can get that owner in here and we'll talk to him. Very good, we'll do it. Okay, get right on it. Now we see the detectives are off on the right track. But what about the characters played by our actors? Let's get back to them. The following scene was written, rehearsed, and recorded in advance. And of course, Lieutenant Campion and his men are unaware of what is going on in this scene, just as they would be in the job. All right, Joe. I'm coming. Oh, Joe. Oh, and you don't keep that a friend to me. That was the best fight all season, and I got to miss the finish. I appreciate it, Joe. Hello, Ellie. Hi. Well, what's the big jam you're in? You sure it's not the car? No, it's not the car. It only should be. Where's the keys? Here. Here you are, Joe. Mm. Where'd you leave the car? In the same place, right where you always leave it. All right. Now, what's this big jam you're in? He went out to get some chow mein to bring back. Let me tell it, will you? Well, who's stopping you? I went out and I, I started to the Chinese restaurant, all right. But then I figured it's Friday. It's going to be a long weekend and I don't have much money in my pocket. So? So I, I figured I ought to do a little work. Then I ran into you on the corner and I said, Joe, can I borrow your car? You said, sure, why not if you fill it up with gas? So you gave me the keys and that was that. Not yet that wasn't that. You let me tell it my own way. So I lent you the car. Yeah, that's right. And I drove around scouting for a good place to make I parked it on 72nd Street where I could get away easy. I walked around the corner, and there was this liquor store just right for picking. Using my car for the get? It was all perfectly simple, Joe. Wait, wait, there's more to come. What's to come, Dunk? Well, it, it was a good touch, and I cleaned out the register, and I'm heading for the door, and all of a sudden, another clerk comes out from the back with a gun. Uh-oh. So what could I do? I blast away. He drops, and I take out around the corner for the car. To make a long story short, I'm in the car and I'm away. Is the guy dead? He didn't wait around to find out. My car you got to borrow to go heist the joint and shoot up a guy. That's a fine thing. I'm sure. I'm sure I got away okay. I don't think anybody made the license number. There were some people looking at me as I came around the corner, but I don't think they made the number on the car. Well, supposing somebody did. That's what I want to talk to you about, Joe. Look, if by any chance somebody did and the cops come talking to you, don't tell them you let me the car. What do you mean, don't tell him I lent you the car? What am I going to tell him? Well, you'll know what to say, Joe. You'll think of something. There ain't a chance in a thousand anybody made the car, but I just want to cover every step of ground. Look, look, I'm an innocent bystander. I was in a bar and grill watching a fight. You didn't tell me what you were going to do. Why should I cover for you? Joe, I've known you a long time. A friend in need is a friend indeed. <sighs> oh, tell, tell me, tell me something, Dunk. Huh? What? Uh, uh, how much did you get out of the liquor store? Money, you mean? Yeah, money. Over 500. How much over 500? $812. Well, that wasn't bad. Was it worth shooting a man for? Joe, you gotta help me. I help you plenty. Give me 400. What do you mean, give you 400? You want me to help you, don't you? But that's half. It ain't half. You got 812. All I'm asking is 400. But there's not a chance in a thousand there'll be a kickback. All right, then what are you worried about? Now, let's forget the whole thing. I'll go home and go to sleep, and if the cops talk to me, all I can tell them is the truth. Well, you got me in a box, Joe. Oh, it's your box. Give him the 400, Dunk. What are you taking chances? Well, what are you uh, going to tell them if they talk to you? I don't know yet. I'll think of something. <laughs> 
Yeah, but what? Well, you give me a chance. The deal was just sprung on me. I got to work it out. All right, Joe. You cover me now. Don't forget yeah, me. I'll cover you if they talk to me. Thanks, Joe. I knew I could count on you. Oh, boy, this is a load off my mind. What a relief. Now that it's such a relief, please go down and get the child made. Now, with sufficient information on which to act, Lieutenant Campion has instructed his men on their next step in the investigation. Detectives Clancy and Jacobson, for instance, go to 761 East 76th Street, the address listed for Joseph P. McCondy, in whose name the car is registered. Remember, from now on, there is no script. The actors are on their own. So are the detectives. Let's see what happens. Hey, Mike. McCondy. Mike? Is there something I could do for you, gentlemen? What's your name, Chief? Joseph P. McCondy. We're detectives. Oh, oh, do you own an automobile? Yes, I do. What kind of a car do you have? I have a 1950 Plymouth two-door. Did you have a little accident tonight with it? No, sir. Do you have a license? Yes, sir. I have it right here. Can you see it? Sure. Yeah. Is there something wrong, gentlemen? Well, uh, you were just checking a little accident something. tonight, I'm sure, someplace, didn't you? No, sir. You sure of that? Absolutely. You loan the car to anybody? No, sir. Where is the car now? Well, I left it on 2nd Avenue between 77th and 78th Street. Why did you leave it around there for? Well, I was at a bar all night. I was watching the fights. I see. Anybody with you? No, sir. Well, in Are the you bar, sure? I, I've a couple of boys I see every once in a while in there. What's some of their names? Give me one name. Well, there was, I, I'd give you a couple. It was Bud and Tommy. Uh-huh. But you, you didn't lend uh, Bud or Tommy your car tonight, no, did you? No, no, no. We the were all there. I'd like to talk to you. I'll hold on. You don't mind, do you? Just... No, sure. Do you have anything right. on you before no, you... Sir. Huh? No, sir. Absolutely not. You're sure of that? I'm clean. Ever been arrested? No, I've never been arrested. You're sure of that? Absolutely. Look, anything that you say, we're going to check. Don't forget that. Right, sir. So you might just as well tell us the truth right now. Yeah, I've never been arrested. You've never been arrested? Oh, I've been down at the house a couple okay. of times. Okay, let's go. Okay. With Joe McCondy in custody, the detectives return to the station house. They walk them upstairs to the squad room and into Lieutenant Campion's office. Son, if this is a McCondy, follow on that car. Oh, hello, Mr. McCondy. How do you do, sir? Sit no. down there a minute. Yes, thank you. Can I right. see you outside a minute, Lieutenant? Yeah, you stay in here with him, Howard. Yeah, okay. I'll be right back, Mr. McCondy. We have some other business to take care of. Could I, I smoke in here, sir? All right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but don't throw the butts on the floor. Oh, no, yeah. I wouldn't do that. You want any coffee? Yeah, I wouldn't mind a little okay. black. Huh? Stand up. Yeah, sure. Everything you have in your pockets, take them out and put it on the desk here. All right. Everything, no matter what it is. Okay. If it's money, count it. All right. In front of me. Yeah. Mm. This is embarrassing, because I'm not too well healed. I, I only got uh, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13 dollars. 13, okay. Put it back. Okay. Okay. Any other Howie? cards or I have a wallet here, Howie. Okay. Yeah, well, let's look at that, will you? All right. Yeah. My wallet, that's not a wallet I got to keep. Who do you live with at this address? Nobody. I see, all right. What do you work at, Mr. McCondy? Well, I've, I kind of dapple in uh, sports, uh, equestrian. Uh... What do you mean, dapple? Well, you know, I hang around uh, the racetracks a little bit. You're a bookmaker? Well, a little bit. You just... take numbers? No, I don't take no numbers. Have you ever fingerprinted for anything? No, I was never fingerprinted. Never fingerprinted? No. Because we're going to fingerprint you. Well, that's all right. It's your privilege, I guess. Excuse me a minute. Spot tonight. Lieutenant, he was in the spot up on the avenue tonight. Yeah, we'll come to that. Fine. Say, uh, Jerry, check the BCI on this fellow's name and address, and you got a pretty good description of him. Okay. And uh, then I want you to check uh, the information bureau and see if he's been... A... Do you ever get a summons for anything? No. Never had a summons no. in your life? No. Oh, yeah. you mean a parking summons and yeah. something like that? Well, I got, I got a ticket for speeding there once or twice. How long ago was that? Summons, isn't it? Yeah, I, why don't you answer the question? Well, I, I call those tickets, you know. <laughs> you were convicted, so it's, then. It's Is that right? You were fined? Yeah, I was fined. I, well, that's a I conviction. Oh, that's a con now, uh, where were you uh, at 9.20? I was at Glenham's Bar and Grill on, on 2nd Avenue between uh, about 75th and 76th Street. I got there about, uh, oh, about 9 o'clock. I had some... Uh, Real rotten chow there, and then I uh, had a few beers with uh, Spud and Tommy, what I told you about. And we were chewing the rag there for about an hour. The fight went on at about 10 o'clock. And uh, we made a couple of bets, me, me and this Spud and Tommy, and... Uh, you didn't leave the premises no, between no. 9 and, and 10 no, no. o'clock? No, no, Did you see the whole fight? Yeah, I went 10 rounds. 
Who won the fight? I'm Mero. I won the... I won the... What, what odds did you get? Two to one. I gave the oh, odds. Oh, you gave the yeah. odds, huh? What did you get on that, Jerry? Anything? Hey, McCondy, what are you handing out here? You did a bit in 1952 for Pettit Larceny. What kind of a Pettit Larceny was You went to the island. Oh. What kind of a pettit larceny was that? Was that grand larceny and reduced to pettit larceny? You took a plea on it, didn't you? Yes, yes. It was grand larceny then, wasn't it? Well, yeah, I don't... Listen, I don't know the technical words for these things. Oh, you know just as much about it as we do. Well, you arrest You know more law about that than... Now, hold it, fellas. Listen, who used your car tonight? We haven't got all night. There's a man dying. I told you when we picked you up at your house that we were going to verify everything that you told us. Remember me saying that? Yeah, yeah, I know that. Listen, Mac, why don't you stop kidding? We're bringing the bartender over here. and Well, you can bring him in. He's coming in. That's okay with me. Sure Howie, now. take this yeah. guy over and fingerprint him and let him think this thing over. And if he don't come up with something different, boy, you're in. It's after one in the morning. A detective has gone to Glenham's Bar and Grill on 2nd Avenue to get the bartender Whitey. He brings him into Lieutenant Campion's office. Hi, Luke. Hello. Uh, this, uh, this is Harry White, and they call him Whitey. He's the bartender. This is Lieutenant Campion in charge of the squad here. Hello, Hello, Whitey. How Hi, are you? Lieutenant. This is Detective Heaney and Detective Jacobson. Hi, Whitey. Hi, Whitey. How do you do? So How long have you Whitey? been in our precinct, Whitey? Oh, uh, I've been working a joint up there about eight years now. Eight years, huh? Yeah. All, All right. right, if I sit down? Go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Sit down. You can smoke. Do what you want. You know Joe McCondy, Whitey? Yeah, I know Joe a long you time. You see him tonight? Yeah, yeah. He was in tonight. Was he in the gym all night? Yeah, yeah. Was he there all night? Uh... Well, wait a minute now. He, pretty busy night. He came in, uh, came in a little after nine o'clock, and it was about nine o'clock. Yeah. He was there all night then? Yeah, he was there. Uh, well, let's see. Now the fights. He was watching the fights. He was there till about uh, quarter of eleven, I think. Anyway. Who was he with, Whitey? I had a couple of pals of his. Uh, Who are they? Oh, I don't know. Their last name's Tom and Bud something. He's, he's always with them. What time did Joe come in there, did you say? Oh, I think it was around 9 o'clock. Might sure, was it 10 o'clock? Oh, no, no. He was, no, he was in at 10 o'clock. Was he, was he there at 7.30? No, no, he wasn't there at 7.30. Well, did right. you miss him any time at all between 9 and 10 o'clock? Between 9 and 10? Yeah. Did you miss him? No. You he, took a bet off. No, he was there. He was drinking all the time. He... Well, he said he was there since about 7.30. All evening and all night. No, Somebody's lying here, Whitey. Either you or him now. No, Come on. I remember. Listen, I know. I know Joe very well. We're what about his two I pals, Whitey? Did they leave the place at all tonight? No, the two pals were there. They were there all the time. They came in with hey, him? wait a minute. I tell you one thing. The phone rang. And uh, I picked it up. And the call was for Joe. But this was uh, this was about 10.30, I think. So uh, I called Joe, and Joe went up the phone. I forgot about it. I was busy, like I said, you know. And uh, suddenly Joe comes running up the bar. He says, I got to go. What time was that? Well, this was... Uh, well, this was about right after the fight. Was this male uh, or female voice? Uh... uh you mean, you mean the guy yeah, that the called? Call. It, was a, it was a male voice. Male, male voice. voice. Yeah. Yeah. And he called, and then Joe said he had to leave right away? Yeah, he said something about... Uh, uh, he says, uh, I got to go up to Ellie's, I think it was. What Ellie's. time was that about? I think it was about quarter of 11. It was right after the fights were over. Yeah. Oh, we don't need a lineup for this. Bring Joe in and make sure he identifies him. Uh, Dick, okay. go out and bring Joe in. Is this the fella here? Yeah. Hi, hey, Whitey. Hi, Joe. Hi. Hey, Joe. Yeah. You said that you're in the bar all night. Yeah. Until the time you come home, the detectives met you at your door. Yeah. What are you lying about? Well, I was there. Well, well Whitey, all night. Whitey, Whitey, now, stop. Whitey said you weren't there. He said you left there. What? Who's Ellie? I don't know no Ellie. Well, you got a phone call and you left the place all excited. Well, I wasn't excited. I, yeah, it's true. Cool. Cool. I, I got a phone call. At, at Whitey's place, you see? Now, here's the way it works. And like I told you before, I... All right, I take a little book here and there, see? Listen, Joe. No, that's the, the truth. Book. That's true. You want to tell you, you want to hold a bag for everybody, hold it. Because you're going to you're gonna hold it unless you tell us who you loan your car to or if somebody else uses your Maybe car. Maybe Joe would rather talk to us with Whitey outside. You wait outside a while, Whitey. Yeah, okay. 
Go on out with them, Dick. Huh? Very good. Good luck, Joe. All right, Whitey. Thanks. Are you going to tell us who you loan your car to or not? I didn't lend it to nobody. All right, nobody had your car tonight. No, you, you had it the all only one had it. The was keys. On a, it was on the street. Hold it, fellas. Does the car belong to you? Is sure. there any, there's no mortgage on it or no, anything else? No. It all belongs to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Does everything in the car belong to you? That stuff in the back, uh, on the trunk and all like everything, that? So everything so belongs yeah, to you, huh? Yeah. Is that right? That's right. All right, well, how about the gun under the seat? I don't know nothing about no gun. Now, you fellas heard him say everything belongs to him. And do you know with a previous misdemeanor, boy, this is a felony. You're not kidding anybody. You're in. Well, there's a man dying dying. over there. All I know is you could check with with the Whitey and with Bud. Bud works in the garage on First Avenue. We'll have somebody check. Now, Condi, I want to tell you something. Yeah. Now, we found this gun in your car. And what we're going to do, we're going to send this gun down to the Ballistic Bureau to have a test made and to see if it conforms with the bullets that were shot into that man tonight. Okay. So we're just going to hold you. You are now arrested. You're arrested for 1897 of the penal law, which happens to be a felony. So I want to tell you right now, you're permitted to call somebody or write a letter. Tony, you... why don't you get some off yourself and kick in? You haven't got a chance. I tell you, I, well, everything I told you is true. We've been babying you all day okay. and all night. I, I don't We're take... not going to baby you anymore. I, I don't want to take no raps for nobody, so... Oh, uh, you're not going to take any raps? No. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Seat. Why don't you tell the lieutenant just what okay. happened? Okay, okay. Right, let's go. I got a phone call. Let him talk. White, you see, from, uh, from Dunk. Dunk. Oh, uh, what's Dunk's name? Dunk, Dunk Rui. Dunk Rui? Yeah, it's like Dewey with an R. Where does he live? He lives on uh, 39871st Street. That's Ellie's. Uh, uh, that's his girlfriend. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's where he called me from Ellie's house. Let's take this name and address sure, for sure. a while. Check that at the BCI. Okay. See if we get anything right. on him. Go ahead now. Well, he called me up and uh, he said uh, he had to see me, you see. Yeah. So I told him to come down because I wanted to watch the fight. I didn't want to miss the last round. So he said it was very important I should come to Ellie's house as fast as I could get there. He was, he was the one who was excited. I wasn't excited. You're the calm type. Yeah, you know. I, so anyway, uh, I went over to Ellie's house and I loaned, I loaned Dunk my car. I didn't, he didn't tell me what he was going to do with the car. No, he twisted your arm for you to get it from him. Well, I, I lend him a car. He paid Where's me a couple Dunk of now? bucks. I don't know where he is now. Maybe he's at Ellie's. At Ellie's house? Yeah. What time okay. you lend him the car? I don't know when he took it. I gave him the keys. Where do you generally meet him? At Whitey's. At Whitey's? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But he goes steady with Ellie, huh? Yeah, I've been up there for a bit. But does he live with her? Well, he's there most of the time. Let's, Just a uh, friend. Let's be discreet, you know. What's that location again? 398071st. What apartment? It's uh, 3E, I think it is. It's on the third floor. They got a phone over there? Yeah. Okay. Say, Dick, yes, Jerry, sir. get right over to this Ellie's house. You may nail this guy right there. In fact, I think we better put him in the boob downstairs and we'll all go over. Now, 20 minutes later, the detectives are in the hall on the third floor outside of Ellie's flat. Here, as they hope to make the final arrest in the case, Lieutenant Campion gives his instructions. Yeah, but listen, everybody get your guns out right now. We don't want anybody to get injured. Yeah. Special delivery. Okay. Oh. Where's Doc? Quick! Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, don't hide her. There's no such a hide. No, she's not. She's going to be a nice little girl. Listen, Ellie, where's Dunk? Want? Where's Dunk? Dunk That's... who? Oh, you know Dunk who. Now, don't give us that line. I don't know what you're talking about, really. You don't, oh, huh? Look the place over, Lieutenant. Yeah, look this joint over. Give us a good station. Yeah, give this a good station. There's nothing here. We'll find out. We'll find out. We're well, the best moving men in the world. We're going to scream, too, so just keep it nice and quiet. Go over there and sit down. Okay. Oh. That's my money. Yeah, How much is that? A couple of hundred dollars? What is a couple of hundred? It's my money. It's all I got. It's all How my much? money. How so much? Uh, I don't know. About two or three hundred dollars or something like that. Count it's, that out, I saved Jake. it. Billy, where's Dunk? I don't... Come on, we know he was up here tonight. Jerry, let her watch him counting this dough, will you? How much is there? There's $815 here. Well, $815 isn't a couple. I don't take it out and count it all the time. I don't keep my money in the bank. I keep it under there. You know the difference between a couple of hundred dollars and $800. Look, look, I'm going to cover the door in case this bum comes in. Oh, do that yeah. by all means. And yell if you need some help there. Oh, Let's well, get back to the money. Get this money. It's my money. It's my money. It's oh, all the money I have. Don't be screaming. I ask you that again. Okay. What do you do for a living? I don't know anything right now. Where I... did you get this money? 
I saved it. I've, I've, I've worked other times. I've been on the stage. What kind stage. of work do you do? Well, I've been on the stage. How long ago? Oh, several years ago, just uh, for a little while, and then I've, I've had other jobs. I've... Well, how do you maintain yourself right now? Right now, I'm, I'm unemployed. For how long? Oh, about six months or something like that. Six months, and you got 815 fish under the cover there? You live here alone, Ellie? Yes, sir, I do. What's men's clothes doing in the closet? Some, that's, uh... Your father's. No, not my father's. There's somebody left them here. No, She'll explain. It's a... Come on, she'll explain. You've been arrested before, Ellie? No. Never been arrested? No. Shh. Hold on. Ellie, stop. Yeah, man. Pick him up, man. Pick him up. Give him a quick fan. Take him up, Fred. What's this, Ellie? Give him a frisk. Oh, no, I don't know. Sit down. Sit down. Oh, right. Sit down there. You didn't know Dunk, huh? I didn't say I didn't know him. I said I hadn't seen him in a long time, and I hadn't. Dunk, you better get that new suit out of the closet. Who You're you? going to need it. We're cops. I don't know you cops. Oh, do you want to be shown? Well, sure, I want to be shown. Shut what do you up, work you at? Bum, you weird show you. What, what do I'm... you work at? I don't work. I'm sick. Are you? You'll be sicker when this is over. How long do you know the Jane here? How long do I know you? A couple, uh, couple years, right? Yeah, a couple years. Do you, what, do you, what you live you... here? Well, I don't know what you want. What do you want with me? Are they your clothes in the closet? <sighs> They're his clothes. Yeah, Did you leave any money with her? You left, a, you left an envelope with her, didn't you? Some dough? She said you How much did. Was it... Shut up. You'll keep quiet. How much did you leave with her? Look, look, I, look, I want a lawyer. I mean, I want... No, no, I, don't, I don't get a lawyer. You get a lawyer. How much did well, you leave with her? How much money? She said no, you left no, I, I did. All right, I left her some money. She I don't said know. you left 800 no. bucks. Is that right? I didn't leave. No. How much did you leave? No, no, no. You didn't, didn't count it. I didn't leave any 800 dollars. So, me. What are you going to charge or something? Where am I charge? You'll tell. You'll hear. We're going to give you 48. Did you ever hear about a 48? I don't know what it is. No. Well, we make out a short affidavit down in court, see, and it's a 48. And if we can't find anything on you in 48 hours, we give you another 48. And we keep giving you 48. Until you get wise to your own. Come on, come on. Come on. I did not. Yeah, that's the right All right, get them up. We'll take them down the house. Wait till I see that Joe. I'll tell him. Come on, keep going, Dunk. Next time, I'll borrow somebody else's car. And that was Cops and Robbers. With real cops and not-so-real robbers. They were actors, and I'm sure you will agree, very good actors. Playing for the most part without a script, knowing only the backgrounds and motivations of their characters. John Sylvester was Dunk, Elspeth Eric was Ellie, Larry Haynes played Joe, and Ken Lynch was the bartender. The CBS Radio Workshop is grateful to Lieutenant Dan Campion and Detectives Richard Jacobson, Howard Clancy, and Jerry Heaney for helping us try to prove a point. I hope we did. You have been listening to Cops and Robbers on the CBS Radio Workshop. Cops and Robbers was conceived and directed by Stanley Niss, who also acted as your narrator. All names were fictitious, except those of our detectives, who are all retired members of the Detective Division, Police Department, City of New York. This is Art Hannis inviting you to listen next week when the CBS Radio Workshop will present The Legend of Jimmy Blue Eyes, a narrative poem set to music by Ray Noble. The story of a jazz trumpeter who sells his soul to the devil. The CBS Radio Workshop is produced in New York by Paul Roberts. Another brilliant concert by the New York Philharmonic Symphony comes to you over most of these same stations on Sunday as Guido Cantelli returns to conduct an exciting program featuring the Beethoven Concerto No. 4 in G major with the distinguished German pianist William Bachhaus as soloist. Stay tuned for five minutes of CBS News to be followed on most of these same stations by the Jack Carson Show. Tonight, the CBS Radio Workshop was transcribed. This is the CBS Radio Network.